You can't see it, but these laser light pulses are manufacturing something called terahertz radiation, or T-rays. T-rays are basically a form of light. It's just simply that they're at a frequency that's between infrared and microwave frequencies. So it's stuck between um, the optical world and the electronics world. And the T-bit stands for terahertz, which is the frequency. Astronomers use the terahertz frequency range to look at stars because a lot of space radiation is in the T-ray region. But the problem has been that scientists didn't know a way to make T-rays in the lab. So we were able to detect them, but not generate them. And this ability has really only emerged in the last 10 years. So that's why they're new and why people haven't really heard of them. Yet terahertz radiation was discovered in 1896. The reason why T-rays are so hard to, to generate in the lab is they're kind of in no man's land, stuck between the world of light and optics and the world of electronics. So this shows you the frequency spectrum, and as you can see, uh, T-rays or the terahertz region is here, and on one side you've got visible light, and on the other side you've got microwaves. And basically, this is in the domain of electronics, whereas on this side, it's optics and photonics. So T-rays are bang in the middle of those two regions, and that's what makes it an extremely challenging area. Measuring how an object absorbs the terahertz radiation reveals clues about the properties of the material. Basically, the way we do this with T-rays is we blast the molecule with many T-ray frequencies all at once and we see which frequencies got absorbed by the molecule and which didn't. Each molecule has its own characteristic vibrational resonances and by measuring these vibrations, we can identify one molecule from another. So it's like the molecule's fingerprint. So it's a bit like um, if you make a wine glass sing by making the wine glass resonate with your finger different wine glass shapes will have different um, different notes and it's the same with molecules what you're seeing here is um, a picture of a butterfly uh, with a little twig uh, just above it and uh, we've blasted this butterfly with many different terahertz frequencies all at once from 0.01 terahertz all the way through to one terahertz different details in the butterfly's wings emerge for different frequencies. So the darker the patches of the image, that means it's absorbed those terahertz frequencies more than others. And so it tells us something about the molecular composition. T-rays can effectively see through packaging. Paper, plastic, clothing, even wood appear transparent under terahertz radiation, which distinguishes between properties that are broadly defined as wet and dry. We have the, a dry envelope, which has very little change to the pulse, as opposed to the Australian $100 note, where the, the ink that's been used to draw that note has some kind of degree of dampness, depending on the bonding of the molecules that make up that plastic note. And that is then visible because it changes the shape of the terahertz pulse that, that passes through it. Professor Abbott says T-rays have enormous potential for security screening. The X-ray scan only tells you the shape of the object in there. So if it's the shape of a gun, you'll see a gun. Whereas the T-rays will tell you more. It won't just give you the shape of the image, but it will give you that molecular fingerprint. And so I will be able to detect whether there's maybe plastic explosives in there and things like that that you wouldn't normally detect with the X-ray. T-rays, for example, can discriminate anthrax from, say, salt in an envelope simply because the anthrax molecule will have different vibrational uh, frequencies to the salt molecule. So by blasting the envelope with many different T-ray frequencies all at once and seeing which frequencies get absorbed and which don't gives us a unique fingerprint for the anthrax. Unlike X-rays, T-rays are safe for human application because they're non-ionising radiation. Because X-ray photons are such high energy, 
um, they blast right through uh, soft tissue in the human body and so you don't actually get much contrast in the skin and in the soft tissue whereas um, T-rays are more gentle and will give you much better contrast for detecting those cancers near the surface. The Adelaide University team is researching use of terahertz to safely distinguish between cancerous or healthy cells without surgery. In this slide we can see some exciting results because what you see is the areas of disease tissue show up very differently in the terahertz image to the areas of healthy tissue and that means that we can use the terahertz radiation to detect the differences between the healthy and the dangerous tissue. We want to monitor healthy cells and unhealthy or cancerous cells and see what terahertz radiation sees in terms of the difference between the two cells. The Adelaide Uni team predicts that T-rays will play a bigger role in the future than X-rays do now. It's a lot cheaper than X-ray machines and MRI machines and surgery as well. At the moment x-rays are huge big machines, they're dangerous, so you don't see x-rays in the home, it's always in hospitals. Whereas with T-rays, because it's safe and because it has the potential of being, becoming very compact, you could envisage a future T-ray machine being the size of a shoebox or smaller. I could see these things um, being in everybody's home one day for um, doing regular health checkups. <laughs>